Imagine being known as the greatest of all time, but then when the actual annals of your achievements are listed out, you are relegated to a very minor player in the grand scheme of things. If you know what it feels, you probably know what Anne felt as well in Sumerian mythology. Welcome to another episode of Mythlook with your host Nitin Nair and today we are going to be exploring one unfortunate character from Sumerian mythology who was associated with the sky, creation and known as the father of the gods. The Sumerian god An is part of the trio of gods along with Ea, the sky god of Mesopotamia and Enlil. Although An was regarded as the highest god in the universe, he was only a minor deity in the mythology of ancient Mesopotamia. He was also the father of several demons and spirits including Lamashtu who would prey on children. An, who is around 3000 BCE older than other humans, was a creature from the Sumerian culture's first phase. He was initially regarded as a massive bull and lived in Uruk, which is a city located in the southern region of the country, today known as Iraq. The depiction of cows suggests that An was a part of the herder's pantheon. In Akkadian mythology, Antum, the consort of Anu, is often mistakenly referred to as Ishtar. There are no anthropomorphic depictions of An or his physical form. Instead, his symbol is a horned crown, which is sometimes depicted as a throne, and his animal is a bull. An image of the god is usually depicted on a throne, which signifies his status as the king of the gods. He is often depicted as a king who has granted honor and responsibility to various individuals such as Asur, Marduk and Enlil. The earliest writings of the ancient world did not refer to the god's origin. However, later writings refer to him as a son of Kisar and Ansar. When we look at the family lineage of An in the 3rd millennium BC, the goddess Urus was depicted as his consort. Later in Akkadian and Sumerian writings, the goddess Ki was depicted as his wife. The term father of the gods is associated with An and many deities are regarded as his children. In inscriptions from the 3rd millennium BCE, it is written that An was the father of several deities such as Gatumdug, Mama and Ningirsu. Later literary works refer to him as a father to gods such as Enki or Ea, Adad, Jira, Nana, Sin, Nargal and Sara. Goddesses who are referred to as his daughters include Ninisina, Nidaba, Ninkarak, Ninirbru, Nungal and Nusku. He is also known as the creator of multiple demons known as the Sebetu, Asag and Lamatu. In the epic Era and Isum, he gives the serpent to Era as a weapon to kill humans whenever their noise gets too loud. When Enlil became more powerful, the functions of An and Enlil became more similar. In Seleucid Uruk, the god was sometimes compared with Amuru and Dumuzi. As usual, deities are referred to with various names when it comes to different civilizations or different time zones within the same mythology. And this stands true for Sumerian mythology as well. In the Sumerian language, the word An can be translated as the High One. It eventually became associated with the god similar to how El was used in Semitic languages. In Sumerian cosmology, An is referred to as a dome that covers the flat earth. On the outside of this dome is a body of salt water which is referred to as Tiamat. In Sumerian language, the word An was used alongside the heavens to make it uncertain if the two were referring to the same deity. During the old Babylonian era, however, which ended with Hammurabi's death, Anu was regarded as both the god of the universe and the chief god. In a text from the 71st year of the Seleucid era, which date back to approximately 215 BCE, it is stated that An is responsible for the entire earth firmament. Also, two circumpolar stars were referred to as the Great An and Antu of Heaven. These are typically grouped together with other major heavenly bodies that were seen by Mesopotamian astronomers during the 1st millennium BCE. 
This includes the Moon, Jupiter, Venus, Mercury and Saturn. Although he is not often depicted in popular mythology, Anu is often regarded as a background figure, as he became more remote as the god's veneration grew. At first, he was regarded as a sky god and eventually became the ruler of heavens. Together with Enki and Enlil, he formed a triad that ruled the heavens, the underworld and the earth. He was also regarded as one of the most ancient deities of the seven divine powers alongside Enki, Utu, Shamash, Inanna, Nihursag and Nana. He is often considered to be an important part of the myth, although it might not seem like a major character. Some of the most popular myths from Mesopotamian history include Enkidu, the Epic of Giglamesh and the Enuma Elish. In modern times, An has had a very patchy kind of reference. Many of the Mesopotamian gods who were associated with the Assyrian Empire were left after the fall of the empire in 1612 BCE. During this time, the Assyrians adopted various characteristics of gods from other religions. The people who felt that they were victims of the Assyrian rule expressed their anger and vengeance by destroying their temples and cities. Even though some deities were not widely acknowledged, such as An, some were still worshipped. During the Hellenistic period of ancient Mesopotamia, he was associated with Marduk and continued to be worshipped to around 140 BCE, during the time when the Parthians took over the region and the region moved to Zoroastrianism. There are a lot of similarities between Sumerian, Mesopotamian, Arcadian, as well as Babylonian mythologies and An is one of those characters who's had a very important but subtle part to play in the stories that have come out of the region. And this is not something unique to An because even cultures and mythologies with a lot similar to them in various parts of the world have characters who have been sidelined over the ages due to the changing mindset of the people and their worship practices. Such instances are common but we do not discriminate against any such characters when we do our research and try to feature them in our videos and podcasts. So you can rest assured that we will be bringing you even some forgotten gods in the days to come and to ensure that you don't forget to view our videos on time, click that subscribe button so that you can let the YouTube algorithm know that this video was good and that it should be watched by a lot more people who share the common love for mythology just like us. So until next time, this is your host Nitin Naya signing out by reminding you once again that Mythlok is the home of mythology.